Hola, ¿qué tal, mi gente? I'm Byron Gonzalez here for a SoCal Sound session. And, you know, I always bring you some great musicians to, to enlighten you with, to, you know, just enjoy this video with. And while we have you here, please subscribe. I almost forgot about that. But today, I have an amazing singer-songwriter out of Nashville. Her name is Maddie Diaz. She just played a sold-out show at the Troubadour, and she's the creator and producer, co-producer. She's produced a couple songs on this album. It's called Weird Faith. It's uh, available everywhere. You can stream music, and you can also purchase this lovely vinyl. Look at her. It's her on a horse. So cool. So here we have Maddie Diaz. <laughs> Un gusto de tenerte aquí. Such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, this is a, a amazing album. I do want to get in depth about it. You know, you on the horse and the songs that you uh, wrote. Uh, so vulnerable. There's a lot of you're peeling, peeling the, the the skin off the onion in this one. <laughs> and back and back and back. Yeah, yeah. And the getting, layers and layers. Getting and layers, to the core. Dying. But I do want to get into some other layers of who is Maddie Diaz. I want to know what makes Maddie Diaz the person, not the artist. So, first of all, are you a coffee or a tea person? Oh, coffee, big time. You're coffee. Yeah. Does that I've tried. I've tried the tea thing, and every once in a while, like I'll, I'll turn my back on coffee. But I, I always, I always return. Do you get like um, snobby about coffee, or do you just take whatever coffee? It's a, around? it's a recent snobbery, which is, you know, I'm not, I'm not proud of, I'm not proud of my um, increasing maintenance, high maintenance with, <laughs> with the coffee thing. But yeah, I, I definitely love like a. Uh, a fancy pour over. I'm, but I, I like half and half of my coffee. That's like that's a must for that's me. That's always a must. Yeah. <laughs> no alternative milks. No alternative milks Just and, the and one. no whole milk. I want half and half in the coffee. Nice. It's very important. <laughs> um, so it, in that case, does that make you a morning person or are you a night owl? I actually am a morning person. I, I kind of, um, you know, my eyes just kind of like open at 7, 8 a.m. It's pretty <laughs> painful, you know, especially, you know, if I'm trying to, like, make up for sleep or, like, the travel or whatever. It's still just no matter what I do, it's, I'm up with the sun. Yeah, your internal alarm clock just Relentless. has it out for you. Relentless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't imagine. And now I wake up, like, at 8 a.m., which is still not as early, but it sucks. I've know? heard that it, it gets earlier and earlier, too, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my grandma used to wake up at 4 a.m., so... <laughs> Oh, my God. Here we come. I was like, what are you doing, Grandma? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, at the time of this taping, it was our so solar eclipse. We got partial here in L.A., but um, you went out in excitement to go check it out. Are you much of a person that likes to stare up at the sky, at the cosmos, at the universe? And if so, it, do you have a favorite planet? Ooh, favorite planet. Or cosmic entity. I think, or... I think like... I, I'm definitely just very aware, I think, of of the things coming and going and moving and, and transiting and all of that stuff. So, I mean, I, I wish that I had glasses to stare straight at the sun, <laughs> but I didn't. So I just kind of closed my eyes and, like, I put my face, you know, just, like, in, let in it the splash full you. sun. Let it just splash me. <laughs> um, I like to, you know, just, like, be aware of um, the possibility of being affected by that kind of stuff or like the potential of being affected by that kind of stuff you know i'm open to it <laughs> yeah yeah okay cool there's the there's the energy of the universe right yeah i think it's important to pay attention to and you know i like uh, i find myself uh i definitely uh, subscribe to a couple mm -hmm. of different like podcasty uh, like you know horoscopy podcasty sort of things and and i do find myself falling into a lot of like oh man I really have been feeling that a lot lately, and that just makes so much sense. So, you know. <laughs> That's interesting. That's funny. Um, was, you know, growing up, um, what was kind of like an album, a CD that you just couldn't stop playing? For, I mean, there, there are a couple that like sit pretty, pretty heavily in there. I'd say, I'd say one of the most formative of, of that era for me would be um, Live Through This by Hole. Like just top That's to bottom, cool. just like one of the best records I've ever heard. It was it was that one was really big for me. And then there was a Shania Twain record called uh, The Woman and Me that I feel very similarly uh, similarly about where it's just like there's just no skips. <laughs> and every song is just like gut wrenching and just oh, like a wow. pouring, you know, like and it's so funny because I feel like they're emotionally intense and like very different 
directions. You know mm. what I mean? Like court, like the the whole record is a bit like, you know, high intensity, like sometimes middle fingery, but yeah, you know, like but just a lot of attitude, a lot of attitude, and <laughs> just emotional. And then and then you know the Shania Twain record, um, Man and Me, is like same thing though, like just high potency, like very very emotional and very like pouring your heart out and mm. like offer like an offering you know yeah i mean yeah. that's artists do i mean i'm sure you feel it now right i do feel it i feel <laughs> it oh yeah that's your intent <laughs> behind it. the album behind songs that you put out you're like here's this here's how i feel yeah yep right? yeah it's a full circle for you now full circle <laughs> that's awesome and circle and circle and circle <laughs> <It's> non-stop <laughs> non-stop it's circle we're like circling this. More like infinity <laughs> circle in the block <laughs> Um, what was one of the first concerts you ever attended to when you were little or whatever age you were? One of the first, like, like actual um, indoor concerts that I've ever been to was with my dad. I think I was, like, 13 or 14, and we went and saw Tool play oh, wow. at the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York. And I, I had braces. I had like turquoise <laughs> braces, and I was like wearing my combat boots. And I was like, and like my my dad was like, he was like, he had me by the shoulders, and I was just like standing at the edge of a mosh pit. <laughs> like I was That's just like cool. so excited, and it was just like, oh my god, the the energy in those shows was just absolutely, I mean, just wild. Totally yeah. wild. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So fun. Uh, to first one and combat boots too. Oh yeah, I mean, just like I case, had to have the outfit, you know. <laughs> yeah, just in case someone got close to you, you could just kick yeah, just like throw down. Yeah. Obviously, like as a fourteen-year-old. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> hey, your dad would have probably supported you. Oh yeah. He's like, you kicked their ass. He he brought me. <laughs> it would have been his fault. <laughs> Um, growing up or when you first started having these mu musical inclination, in inclinations, um, what was like the first instrument that you ever picked up or got your hands on? Piano. A piano. Yeah, when I was like five or six, my dad, my dad's a pianist. And so, you know, it was just very like, you know, I'd sit on his lap and he'd just kind of do and then, you know, I'd put his hands on my hands and my hands oh, okay. on his hands. Like kind of like driving. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly <laughs> like that. Yeah. And he'd like work the pedals because, you know, my legs couldn't reach. And, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So then how did that transition into you getting a guitar? How, what made you want to get a guitar? Rather I mean, than continuing on in your father's footsteps. Yeah, yeah. I mean, piano's always been around. I think like, uh, and music has always been around. Like both of my parents are just like big music lovers. And my dad, my, both of my parents are very like diverse in their, um, like genre loves, it was kind of like a little bit of everything, but I started on piano and uh, and then just kind of like, you know, 12 or 13 hit and I was like looking for something a little bit more portable um, and like maybe a little bit like uh, cooler back in that uh, era of it's like 2000, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it was like, uh, Third Eye Blind was so cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, like, and, and Hole was so cool and like, you know, all of these like, Punk bands like Bikini Kill and like yeah. and like um, L Seven and like Liz Fair L Seven and like, and, like oh you God. know what I mean like all these like <laughs> fucking like badass like women were just like just like strumming these guitars and I was like I oh God I really want to do that <laughs> I have yeah to do that. that's so awesome I, it switched at some point for me around like. 13, 14, and, like, I remember just, like, my dad saying, like, you're not going to get calluses unless you practice a lot. Like, you have to practice a lot. Mm. And so I would, like, just practice until, like, my fingers bled. And, I've, I mean, like, you can't get anything out of these fingers. <laughs> it's, they're bloodless. They're gone. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Wow. I can't. You see, that's why I never got into music. I, can, I cannot practice. <laughs> uh, the practicing is, oh, man. I mean... So I'm so tough on myself, you know what I mean? Like I've yeah. I've gotten I've gotten better in in my age, but I was oh I was so tough on myself then. So I just would practice and practice <laughs> until it was just like I knew I had it. Meticulous. Yeah, meticulous. Wow. Well now now I got to know Maddie Diaz. You got to know Maddie Diaz as a person. Now let's find out who Maddie Diaz is as a writer, as a person who created Weird Fate. But first, um, let, let's get into a song. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. What, um, what song you want to play first? Let's play Same Risk first because, you know, you like the same risk. Or uh, you told me you like the same yeah, risk. Yeah, I, I love that song. Okay, it's one okay. of my uh, repeats on my show, Bilingual Thanks. Songs. So, Maddie, can I call you Maddie? 
call me Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> Not Miss Maddie Diaz. I'm so curious as to what else you call me. Miss <laughs> like, Diaz. Is there more? <laughs> yeah. Madai. Yeah. I just mispronounce it. Uh, yeah, every Madi. Madi. <laughs> um, I kind of want to go back to the song Same Risk in a little bit and just kind of surface level, just from the song, not from like the... I guess it kind of relates to the song as well, but um, what is like a risk you took within your career that you think wouldn't have, if you didn't take that risk, you wouldn't be here at this moment? Mm. If there ever, ever was one. Oh my God, are you kidding me? The question. whole thing is a risk. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is risky. You know, I think there was a, there have been a couple of moments um, there have been a couple of moments where I absolutely could have um, stopped, and I just didn't. And mm. I'm really grateful that I didn't, and I'm proud of myself for not. And I'm really grateful that um, you know songs have always just been a part of like how I digest stuff going on in my life, like process things going on in in my world, mm-hmm. and. Um, and if it weren't for songs, I don't think I would have gotten through some of like some pretty major life changes. Right. Um, and I feel really fortunate that like you know the songs that came from those really big life changes also like have found um, as many ears as they have, you know, and like as many people have found some of those songs as they have. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm really glad that I just didn't stop because I definitely could have. Yeah, and to <laughs> to put. Those experiences down on paper, man, I can barely do that, you know? It's so, hard. It takes a lot. Even yeah. journaling is just like, oh, God. Like, you know <laughs> it's what I mean? exhausting. It's like, you know you want to do it. You know you got to put it down. But, like, it's it's hard to, it's hard to, like, give yourself that time and, like, that, that moment. Um, but, yeah. You know, after all these years and a couple albums out um, and then your latest album, does it get easier with time, do you think? I think some things get easier, you know? I think some things um, become more reflexive than they were before. Um, It's like I journal a lot now, which Mm. is weird. Like, I actually (laughs) never journaled, like, ever. Ten years ago, and, oh, God, exhausted. Like, every every couple of months, you would see a page. Or, like, if there was something crazy going down, you would see, like, you know, many pages for, like, a week at a time. And then it would go away for a year. (laughs) You know what I mean? Interesting. and and I've been so much better about like being consistent with like checking in with myself and like what's going on in my life and 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 you know like there are definitely moments where like it's like walking into a room with a new person like sometimes that's yeah. as easy as breathing you know and then there's still some moments where like that just is it feels like impossible to be honest with you know yourself and mm-hmm. then the other person and so it's just like the waves yeah well even more so i mean if you're if it's harder to be honest with yourself how how do you make it that it's that you're honest with the public because these are public songs and you're uh, you know i'm listening to the album you're just like whoa right well you know sometimes i feel like it's almost easier which is this is such a weird thing um sometimes i think it can be easier to be honest with uh, strangers or people that you don't know mm. as well as, you know, the people that, like, hold your heart almost as protectively as you do. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? A little bit. I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, that's what comedians do, too. Like, yeah. you know, performers yeah. in general, they're yeah. able to, like, just spit it all out. But when you're in a room with someone, even a loved one, it's hard to get through that. Yeah. I, th- I think it's, like, it's almost just, like, kind of... Uh, trying to stay like as present and uh, as you can and like prepared to surprise yourself, you mm. know, with like, with some sort of like new honesty. You know, I feel like sometimes I can learn as much in a room with a with a stranger as I can from, you know, being in a room with somebody that's known me my whole life. Wow, so it's kind of like your song, Everything Almost, you're gonna have to put your everything into your work, not even just a relationship, but everything you do. Everything. Is that kind of how that song came out? How did that yeah. influence everything almost? Well, and you're you're right. Like it's it's like the same in a relationship as it is in like in a career, and or it is in like I don't know, like when I'm like trying to go for a run. It's like mm-hmm. it's like you want to give everything, 
but you have to reserve just a little bit. You know what I mean? Like you have to, that's the almost part. (laughs) You have to, you have to, because I don't know, like I, when I, when I've, when I've given all of it, you know, given all of it and given everything away, like, and not keeping any of it for myself, like, you know, I got, I got to build up from ground zero again. That's really hard. Yeah. I guess too, because when you mentioned running, like that popped into my head, like about giving, not giving it all, because even if you, when you're running, you give it all, you, you, right. you, all of it, you exhaust yourself. Right. So I guess, yeah, you can't give it yourself all. Right, exactly. It's like in, in that, com- in that like uh, emotional, whatever exploration, like it's like if you, if, if you give it all up, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, not that you can't like show the whole thing, you know, I'm not saying that. Like, I think you can't be like almost completely honest. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. you're either honest or you're not honest. Yeah, you get there eventually. <laughs> you get there you eventually. Get there. Like near the finish line, you're like, all right. I'm almost there yeah. or something. Yeah, right? or something. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. we got to make a podcast to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're circling the block. We're circling the block. We're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> you just created this album, Weird Faith, Maddie. Um, I want to give this to you and then tell me the first word, first sentence, whatever comes to mind when you hold your album. <sighs> Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> it just is. It's just such a thank you. I'm really proud of it, which is like also a, a weird feeling. Um, but I feel like, you know, every bit of art that you can like squeeze out and then like physically hold in your hand is actually just some, it is an actual wonder. Yeah. It just doesn't even make sense. Like, and the fact that it's just like all your feelings are your thoughts and it's not a journal and it's out to the public. Yeah. It's so cool that it gets to come out like this, like (laughs) in this shape, in this. Yeah. It's special. Wow. Lucky. Very lucky. Did this also bring any, Fun memories from the process of creating this album. I know that a lot of the songs are kind of sad, and um, but were there any pockets of happiness throughout this album? There's actually a lot of joy in that record. Um, every single song, which is funny, you know, now in retrospect, um, every single song on this record. I thought I was writing a love. I thought I was writing love songs. I thought I was writing an entire record that was oh. like a owed to a relationship that, you know, I was in. Um, Well, you definitely hear that, too. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny, though, you know, I feel like in retrospect, um, my my partner and I broke up about almost a year ago, Mm. and it was funny, uh, I didn't really listen to the record until we broke Mm. up, and when we broke up, I was like, oh, um, there's a lot of paranoia in this record, huh? (laughs) There's a, a lot, lot of like a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot, a lot of uncertainty. You're looking forward. Yeah, and like you know, I think, I think um, in that process of you know, in the process of my last relationship, and I'm so grateful for this relationship. I think I like discovered so many parts of myself, like so much, so much desire in like a sort of like future, um, a future in partnership that I didn't know that like was a desire for me. And I think, you know, like desire like changes, like depending on who you're pointing it at. Right. You know? Um, but with, with this person specifically, like, I think I really wanted like a family and mm-hmm. you know, kids and the whole you thing. You mentioned and, it in two songs. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I said it. <laughs> so it was at the first song and then somewhere I forgot the other song that was in yeah. there because I just heard the album. And, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I think uh, I think I was like learning a lot about myself in that relationship, and and you know finding the courage to be to to say things out loud that I hadn't said before. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was and it's hard, you know, because I think I can also hear. Obviously, like songs are the songs are written from my perspective, and so you're only getting the one side. Yeah, and it's it's interesting, you know in the aftermath of that relationship, like how, how much of that, it feels isolated in that singular perspective. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. Like, now he's gonna go make an album or your friends. Bring it. 
let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Like this Maddie Diaz universe. (laughs) Like, I would love to hear you figure out how to say it. Let's do this. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. <laughs> um, Your turn. Yeah. <laughs> now right? you go. Now you go. <laughs> Let's see how I hard how hard I work. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the baton. Yeah, that's right. Take it. Um, you know, after doing a couple interviews, I'm sure you've had a, a couple interviews uh, regarding the album. Is there something new that you've learned now, uh, hearing back to the album, talking about the album? Is there a new revelation that has come to you about the album? I think. Um, you know, even in touring this record for the last uh, six weeks um, and continuing to carry some of these songs forward, I think uh, Weird Faith has um, really exposed itself to me, you know, even down to the song specifically. Um, when I was writing the record, I was really in a place of like experiencing so many good things, you know, mm-hmm. happening in my life really as a result of like so much, you know, like the hard work of the record that came before that. And um, and I hadn't experienced, um, success is such a weird word. Uh, it's, <laughs> and because I don't really actually even feel like quite like, like I don't feel like successful yet, you know, like there, when do you ever arrive, you know what I mean? Like mm. when do we ever get to <laughs> the place we're not sure? <laughs> I think so. I mean, you have a vinyl. I have a vinyl, have which a is vinyl. very, you know, super successful. That is a success in itself. Yeah. But I think, you know, like even with that, it's like, it's like the constant trust fall of like believing in yourself mm-hmm. and like believing that like, you know, that like your single human experience is like important, you know, just as important as anybody else's is. And, and like, I think like when I was writing Weird Faith, I was really trying to find like, uh, language to wrap around like uh, why I, w- I should have the audacity or like the nerve to believe in myself again, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like the audacity. Right, like the audacity, <laughs> like the nerve, like how could she possibly, but you know, I was like, I was really um, trying to justify believing in myself. Mm. And I feel like a lot of these songs are like kind of born of like the mantras that I was finding when I was, you know, like encouraging myself uh, and 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 saying like yeah it's okay it's okay you can believe you can believe that like you're good at what you do and that like you're that like you have something worth saying. Well, if anything, to your sold out show at the Troubadour said anything, yes, that is true. <laughs> Baby steps. Things are true. <laughs> Baby steps. Still, still relearning how to believe every day. It don't do you good if you don't believe in yourself. That's right. You know? <laughs> Ah, nice. Like that? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like, and so. And so, so let's get into the last <laughs> song of the session. Um, this one you created with Casey Musgraves. Yep. Or was this one that when you invite an artist to a song, or at least Casey Musgraves, did you have her, did you already have set lyrics for her to sing, or is it she come? I did, you know, I, I wrote the song. I wrote Don't Do Me Good with, um, her name is Amy Wadge. She is an incredible um, writer out of the UK. Um, she lives somewhere over there. Um, and, you know, we were kind of just talking about relationships and um you know like even like the industry and like career and like Mm. why do we keep choosing things that are so difficult or like Uh. you know that like can become like it's this like fine line of like like it's good but it hurts but it's Mm. good but i think it's good for me but it hurts or like you know relationships are hard and they're hard work and like they take work and so Mm. you know so we're talking a lot about that and and then don't do be good came about and and as I was making the record it was this moment in the record where I was just like oh god I I know I know that I don't feel this I can't feel this feeling by myself Mm. you know and and Casey and I have talked a lot about you know we've talked life up and down a lot so that's cool yeah it felt like it felt like a good song for the for the two of us to share Maddie, it was such a pleasure to have you here to talk about Weird Faith and your work and your thoughts. And we got to know Maddie the person and Maddie the artist. But um, what, what's what's ahead for you um, after this? I know that material, not materialistic is the w- wrong word, but just work-wise, you have Jimmy Kimmel. Yep. Jimmy Kimmel. Yep. Tomorrow night at the type, time of this taping, she's going to perform at Jimmy Kimmel. But after that... Um, what, what, what's ahead? Is, are you constantly writing songs? Are you taking a break? 
Are you going to go on more tours? What's ahead for you? I'm actually um, leaving on April 24th to fly to Europe to open a bunch of shows for Casey Musgraves. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm gonna. We start in the UK and then we kind of like do some stuff in Europe and then we finish in the UK and and then you know just like some festival stuff this summer and hoping to find some good home time at some point to do a little bit more like writing. But but plenty of journaling should be done you know, between <laughs> now and then. <laughs> yeah, maybe one of those will be a song. Yeah, just maybe. Does one. that happen? Oh yeah, all the time. Okay. That's why, I mean, it's one of the reasons that I've been like, oh, right, journaling. Right. <laughs> Songwriting. Oh it's, it's right there, and then the song <laughs> is there, so yeah. Oh, that's cool. Well, I, I wish you luck. Thank you again for paying us a visit, talking with me, and yeah, I wish you luck with that Europe tour and, and your next album that might be on its way, like just from the journaling. <laughs> and you know, the next you time, know. maybe in Spanish, who knows? Who knows? Haz uno en español. Un poquito. Te digo. <laughs> <laughs> she is Peruvian, by the, by the way. Little fun fact. She's a Latina. <laughs> pues, un gusto de tenerte aquí. Thank you so much again. Muchas gracias. Um, again, Maddie Diaz, Weird Faith. Go purchase the vinyl if you really enjoy the album. Otherwise, it's streamable on all platforms. And yeah, follow her on Instagram and all the social medias. And hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.